Hello children, welcome back. Now in this paragraph we are going to learn about Delaus's policy of annexation. In the uh, earlier paragraph we have learnt about Lord Wellesley, how he have implemented subsidiary alliance on the princely, princely states. Now today we, we are going to learn how and what was Delaus's policy of annexation. The aim of Wellesley policy of expansion was to enslave the native kingdoms without using much of their British resources. Means, Britishers, they do not want to spend any money of their own. They just want to use the money of the Indian kings. The state that accepted the subsidiary alliance considered the British as their friends. Eventually, in the absence of internal and external threat, they became irresponsible and their administration started deteriorating. Means children, first those who have accepted the subsidiary alliance, they felt that they were very secure and they were having the all benefits from the British army also. So first they were ready to maintain British army also as well as their Indian army also. The kings, what happened? They started not to look after their administration. They felt that they are secure. Britishers are there to help in any time. So what happened? Internal and external was a threat for them. Slowly, slowly, these princely states administration started to deteriorate. It means decline. The outcome of the conspiracy of the British was the anarchy in many princely states. Anarchy I have also explained earlier means the state without king. The Indian rulers got trapped in it children. The British got an excuse to start interfering into internal affairs of these states on the pretext of putting to an end to the anarchy. So anarchy means what? Suppose they were in a such a situation, they were dependent on the British army. And slowly, slowly, these Britishers, they started to interfere in the internal matters of this king. As I told you, one representative was there in the royal court. So, all the things started to uh, deteriorating. Means what? It was like this king, they have to depend on the Britishers. And they became slowly, slowly slave under the British rule. They annexed many states under the same excuses. Means what? They, the Britishers started to say that the Indian kings are not capable to look after their administration, uh, administration work. So, our interference is very important. So, they started to look after the administration on their own will. Then after Burma, now Myanmar and the regions of Punjab were also annexed. If the king died without a son, his state was annexed. In this way, Satara, Jansi, Nagpur etc. became the victims of policy of annexation. So, the Lausi, he came and he also impl implemented a new policy that was annexation. If a particular king died without a son, his state was annexed. Means his state was captured and ruled after um, this British people. Moving further, the Lousy aimed at the helping of the British traders to make a huge profit, profits. Okay, profits from the trade of tea, coffee and cotton by capturing the areas of that produce these commodities in large scale. So, uh, Dalhousie, he came, he came to India and he implemented one policy that is policy of annexation and later he aimed to help the British traders, those who were trading in England to make a huge profits. How he made? He made the profit through the coffee plant and the cotton plant by capturing these all areas okay so to consolidate to the british rule in india and to run the administrative 
administration smoothly, many changes were introduced by Dalhousie in India. To run this smoothly, he had one intention that he want to capture many princely states. Plus, he want to rule India. So, he started to interfere in the area where the communities like tea, coffee and cotton brings a very huge profit for the British traders in England. So, many things he started to change. Okay, the administration work he started to change according to his will. During his tenure, first railway line was started between Mumbai and Thane that is in 1850 CE. The modern postal system started in India and wireless system between India and England too was introduced during this his tenure. So children, there is a boon for us only. Why? First Indian railway started because of for the trade from railway line was started from Mumbai to Thane. Slowly, slowly he introduced the postal system also. He passed laws, laws to ban child marriage and advocate widow remarriage also. As per the system of India, the widow were not allowed to remarriage. And he banned child marriage also. As you all know children, we have learned in 7th standard also. We had one society where child marriage was encouraged in many of the society. So he came to know this system. He stopped this system. He allowed and he made into clear version that even the widow can also remarriage and settle her life. English education spread in India during this time. He introduced many English school for the people, the British's family were here. So for their children he introduced English school. But slowly our Indian children also went to that school okay for English education. The first three universities in India were established in Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata in the year 1857 CE. Thus these reforms were basically for the expansion of British rule and ease in administration. The basic funda was about, uh, about this Reforms. Reform means what? Changes. Why he had changed so many things? To run the administrative work smoothly and plus he want to rule India. Although Indians benefited later on, they had to suffer a lot with the introduction of British reforms. Means he has introduced many things. We Indians benefited it later but starting, it was a very difficult situation because in society, child marriage and widow remarriage, it was not acceptable for the many people. But they have to uh, accept it later. Moving further, dissatisfaction of people. Now, after the policy of subsidiary alliance, the Lausi policy of annexation shook the whole nation terribly. This resulted in dissatisfaction among the peoples towards the British. You must have seen the film like Kranti and Mangal Pandey. If you have not seen, then try and see these movies. It is a real picture and you have to see it, children. At this time, the people were suppressed under the dictatorial regime of the British. In addition to that, the reforms made by Dalhousie add fuel to fire. Different people reacted differently to railways, facilities of post, telegraph and western education. Orthodox people felt that British wanted to destroy their culture. The reforms done by British were basically for running the administration smoothly. The dissatisfaction of people had reached the point of saturation and they were in the state of rebellion which resulted in the freedom movement of 1857. Means children, people were not satisfied with the rules of this the lousy. Actually he implemented this thing to run the administrations smoothly. So he thought that he wanted to change something for the society. If society changes, if they can accept many new things. 
but here india the orthodox people they felt that the britishers are destroying their religions and caste and creed people were not ready to accept the western education so it was a fuel to fire so they were thinking the indians were thinking that britishers are here to destroy their culture and religion so it started a state of rebellion means a revenge okay and the first freedom movement started in 1857 firstly they accepted all the things what the british people used to say later after the moment of 1857 they started to give back means they started to revolt hope you understood this chapter i will coming to you online classes i will be clearing many doubts if you have any doubts i will be there children bye